Guys, okay, we need to talk about it. <sighs> I mean, it's hard to even know where to start, honestly, but I am going to try. <sighs> hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Katie Unfiltered, and on my channel, I like to talk about what I'm watching, makeup that I'm loving, Whatever it is that fits my fancy, you're going to get my unfiltered take. And in today's video, we are talking about it. We are talking about it. Let's talk about, I don't know what I'm doing with my hands here. <laughs> Let's try that again. Today, we are talking about the WandaVision finale. I have so many feelings and thoughts. I have so many questions, emotions, reactions. I literally... <sighs> If you liked this video, please don't forget to leave it a like and say hello down in the comments. Thank you guys so much for being here. This intro is an absolute disaster. <laughs> Let's just jump right into it. I think first things first, bitch, how badass is Scarlet Witch? That costume, the look, the attitude, the everything was just like completely, completely mind blowing what they did with that character. On like my second or third viewing, I was like, can we just play some Let It Go in the background as she's like standing there, like in the middle of all of her power, just like completely transforming and having her moment, going through her hairstyle change, getting a new outfit and being like, I'm a badass bitch and I know what's up. That's literally all I could think about was like this is the marvel cinematic universe's version of elsa and i am here for it putting just the total like badass bitch vibes aside because oh yes this show i feel like is just a lesson in how can i be absolutely wrong about basically everything seriously if you go back and you watch my last video about wandavision and you watch some of my predictions i'm completely wrong about basically everything that i thought was going to happen in this show i was wrong about agatha not really being the bad guy she was i was wrong about the kids being a part of mephisto's soul or really just about the kids being anything more in general just kind of wrong about that i was wrong about pietro coming from an alternate universe i was wrong about agatha's motivations literally it was right there staring at us in the face she literally just wanted to take her power and that was it that was enough i don't know why i was looking for more but definitely wrong about that i was wrong about james spader so i don't know how i got the idea that james spader was going to be in this episode but for whatever reason i was totally convinced that he had been announced that it was public that we knew he was going to be in it and i don't know if that was just a troll or where i got that idea or what but he definitely was not in this episode and on top of that there was just absolutely no big cameo at all really so super wrong about that there really was no big surprise cameo at all and i'm actually kind of glad about that considering that it really would have drawn attention away from this big transformation we got for Scarlet Witch at the end. The concentration really needed to be on her and not on some like big cameo or whatever. I'm kind of glad that I was wrong about that. It turns out that Ralph really was a thing, although I have a lot of mixed feelings overall about Ralph actually being Fiatro and I just, uh, like why? Why? We'll talk about it. And I guess I was right about white vision. Try to say the F five times fast. I was right about white vision there. I did it. Except that it looks like he's going to be a thing for a while and I really didn't expect that. I kind of thought that he would be just in this one show or one episode and then he'd kind of go away. But seeing as he flew away and we don't know where he went, it seems like White Vision is probably going to pop up somewhere later, which I'm excited about but still tentatively nervous. I'm not a big White Vision fan mainly because his storyline just introduces a ton of heartbreak for Wanda. But it seems like she's kind of got her head on straight at this point, so I'm really curious to see how that plays out in future television or movies within the MCU. And I was ultimately correct that Wanda was going to have to destroy the world that she built in order to save it from Agatha to an extent. I am really glad that Agatha wasn't destroyed and that we basically got this little teaser line that we are going to be seeing her again because more Agatha means more Catherine Hahn, and I love both the characters character of Agatha and the actress, I'm very excited to see how they might be able to team up in the future, how they might play off of each other. I'm still hoping that eventually we see more of the mentorship relationship between the two of them. Although based on where it's at now, I doubt that that's going to happen. But 
Who knows? We'll find out, but I am really excited that this character basically seems here to stay, at least for now. But this finale did leave me with a lot of questions and ones that I'm like very comfortable just sitting on for a while, but nonetheless, I still have a lot of questions. Like for instance, where is White Vision now? You know, he flew away, he said, I am Vision, and he has this like existential crisis and then he leaves. Where is he going? Like legit, where does he even have to go? He knows that he's Vision and he has the memories of his relationship with Wanda. You'd think he'd want to stick around and like help her out, but he just like fucks off and is like, all right, bye. So I have a lot of questions as to why he made that choice. And also, we've established that Vision can phase through objects. So why did he crash through the roof when he could have just phased through it? Like functionally, it didn't make sense to me. My next question was around Wanda studying the Darkhold. I know that the Darkhold is this well-established book from the comics. It's also popped up in several Marvel TV shows like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. But overall, the Darkhold actually has a pretty evil past and it's full of dark magic. And so her studying it doesn't exactly feel like a positive thing. Like it's good that she's learning her powers, but at the same time, are we going to address the fact that it is literally called the Book of the Damned and that it's probably full of like a lot of evil shit? I worry she's an impressionable lady. She's still going through a lot. And now she's got this book of evil spells. And I just think that there are probably going to be consequences to that. So for me, I'm like, is that going to come up at all? Is anybody going to call that out? Or are we just all okay with it? I am still wondering why there were no children in the town. And they really didn't show up until the Halloween episode. And then in the Halloween episode, we saw that there was just this really big breakdown in the spell where people were kind of frozen in place or not really animated. We still never really solved the mystery as to why there were no kids in Westview. And then at the very end, when Agatha wakes Dottie up, well, her real name is Sarah and she's just begging to hold her daughter. Please let my daughter out. Why can't I get to her? Please just let me see her. There's something unsolved there that's important and maybe that will play out whenever Billy and Tommy show up again. Maybe that's something that will reveal itself to us, but we never really got clear answers on why the children were effectively locked away and not visible throughout all of Westview. <sighs> Another question, when are we actually going to see Billy and Tommy and the Vision again? We've pretty much well established that yes, we are going to see them again. We've pretty much established that she can conjure them up at will. So when are we going to see them again? And in what circumstances? Based on the end credits, it seems like they might be in some sort of trouble in an alternate universe, or maybe she's just imagining something. At this point, we don't really know what all of that is about. But my question is like, girl, you're by yourself in a cabin in the middle of like these mountains, why don't you just conjure them up and like have your little hex and have them living with you right now? What's keeping you from doing that? Because you're not going to hurt anybody by just conjuring them up in your tiny little space in the middle of nowhere by yourself. That's what I would do. I would literally like go off. I'd find the most remote place and then I'd be like, boom, bam, done. Welcome back. We're all here living happily and not hurting anybody. I don't really know why she isn't doing that beyond maybe she just wants to spend some time by herself learning as much as she can about her powers. I'm not really sure, but that would be my first move. And I'm confused as to why that's not her first move. Pietro. Let's talk about fake Pietro. Why hire that actor? If he's not really going to be Pietro from the X-Men movies from an alternate universe, then why do it in the first place? It just feels like Marvel was just trying to mess with us. And th that's rude. That's me. That was unnecessary. And I'm holding you personally accountable for emotional damage to my soul. Ultimately, I am left with a lot of questions as we all were. But at at the end of the day, I truly, truly loved this show and everything that it represented and really what it means for the future of the MCU. This show perfectly sets up Doctor Strange where we know we're going to be seeing Wanda again. It just gets me really excited for everything that's coming from Marvel in the next few years, honestly. I'm not going to lie. 
after Endgame, I got really nervous because I was like, how how do they keep this up? How do they keep this storyline going? This is very clearly like the ending of an era. What is this next era going to look like? And after watching this show, I have absolutely no doubt in my mind that we're just in for some incredible storytelling. And it makes me really excited that the shows that they're going to be putting on Disney Plus are really high quality, on par with, if not better than the movies. It just gives me a lot of faith in where we're all headed and in the stories that we're going to be able to enjoy. There's something that really just gets me so excited. And I'm super excited that we're literally on the verge of another series starting next week with the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I'm ultimately glad to have my anxieties about the future of the MCU be proven wrong, that we're really going to be diving into and leveraging this really great source material from the comics and taking some of the best elements from the comics and creating new stories for the MCU. And I think that's what Marvel did a really good job with so far in the MCU and where we're taking it next. I'm just... <sighs> I'm so excited. I couldn't be more excited. On a personal level, this show also meant a lot to me. I've been dealing with a lot of my own personal grief and loss over the last few months. And so watching this very strong female character be struggling with some of the same things that I've personally been feeling, watching her navigate that in a very real and vulnerable way just really connected with me. And honestly, it gave me a little bit of a reprieve and just it helped me honestly to work through some things that I think I have been kind of packing away. And so I'm just really thankful for this show and really grateful for the writers of the show in telling a strong female centered show that also centered on the character's vulnerabilities, her weaknesses, and these real life problems that she's still having to deal with. You know, this is a superhero origin story that's really centered on this meditation on grief and loss. This is really what sets the MCU apart, is they're able to tell real human stories through these fantastical, bombastic, incredible, beautiful, huge, big, superhero sized stories. But at the end of the day, this story was about grief and loss. This story was about a woman dealing with an incredibly difficult situation and how she navigates that and honestly sometimes poorly navigates that and what does that mean? I found myself re-watching these episodes over and over again and getting more and more out of them each time. Not only because I just, I love superhero stories, I love Marvel comics, I've been a fan of these my entire life, but also because I'm able to really connect with this character and connect with her story on a deep personal level as so many of us have. It's just been so amazing to go on this journey and I'm so sad. I'm so sad that it's over and I cannot wait for more. I'm I'm absolutely just completely hooked. I cannot wait for next week with the Falcon and the Winter Soldier and I can't wait for more of Wanda and this character and what they're going to do with her in the future. All right, guys, that is my take on the WandaVision finale. If you liked this video, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up and say hello down in the comments. I'd love to hear your favorite part of the episode and your favorite part of the series. Please let me know down in the comments. And if you haven't yet, please consider subscribing. It really means a lot to me. Thank you so much to my 103 subscribers. I love making these videos. If you want to see more of these videos, please let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching. It means so much to me and I will see you on the next one. Bye!